All right, if you've spent any time on Linux, then you've probably heard of tiling window managers. So tiling window managers are different from traditional desktop environments, like say Windows or something like GNOME, in that instead of stacking windows on top of each other, instead of moving floating windows around, uh, what tiling window managers do is they kind of lay out your windows automatically for you in this kind of grid formation. And so none of your windows are on top of each other and you can easily navigate to your other windows using keyboard shortcuts. And it's supposed to be a lot more efficient and productive from using something like a traditional window manager where the windows just stack on top of each other. Now, maybe you're interested in switching to a tiling window manager or maybe you have already, but they're not without their criticisms. For example, this video by Wolfgang goes over a few points on why he basically doesn't think you should use tiling window managers. And the main criticisms of tiling window managers is that number one, they just take way too much time to set up and configure. And number two, it doesn't actually make you any more productive than a traditional stacking window manager would. So I'll go over both those points in this video, but let's start with the first point in that setting up a window manager just takes way too much time to set up and configure. So when you first set up a tiling window manager like i3 or BSPWM, you're going to do a lot of configuration yourself because these have almost nothing out of the box. So these window managers are different from the standard desktop environment, at least for Linux, that would be something like GNOME or KDE, in that those basically have everything already set up for you. So it has volume controls, a status bar, external monitor support, and all these different things that you come to expect from a desktop computer. A window manager actually doesn't have any of those by default. You have to set all of that up. And if you start with something like BSPWM, the first thing you see whenever you start up your system is literally just a black screen. Even if you just want to set a desktop wallpaper, then you need to download an external program just to set something like that up. So when you first hear about this, this might sound like a major inconvenience in that you have to set up all these different things yourself. It sounds really annoying to download all these different programs and learn how to do everything by yourself when you can just download something like GNOME and get everything out of the box. But to me, using a window manager is kind of like making an investment. You're making an investment with your time in that you will be productive later on if you just stick with it. Saying that setting all this up is a complete waste of time is akin to saying that learning how to touch type is a waste of time. Because the first day or the first week that you try to learn how to touch type after you've never done it before in your life, it's going to be a lot slower and a lot less efficient than just typing like you normally would. So you might make a video saying why touch typing is a complete waste of time the first day you try it. But like tiling window managers, the more time you spend with it and the better you get at it, the more productive you're going to be until you're at the point where you can't even go back to the old way that you did it anymore just because it seems so old and clunky and slow. It just doesn't make any sense to continue to keep doing things the old way. And that's kind of how I feel about tiling window managers. So it takes a lot of work to initially set up, and so you do have to make some kind of time commitment. But honestly, once you get most things set up, like all of your basic computer functions, you really don't need to touch it too much besides that. So once you have the initial setup done, there's not a whole lot left that needs to be done. Sure, maybe you can try to learn a few more keyboard shortcuts and become a little bit more efficient. But honestly, once you spend a few hours with it and start to get a little acquainted with it, it really is worth the time that you spent learning it. It's not like you're tinkering on your computer every single day and it's going to break all the time. Honestly, once I initially set up my window manager, I didn't really touch it again for another eight months just because I wasn't that interested in it. And the only reason why I tinker with it more now is just because it's fun just to try out new things and learn new things that I didn't before. Honestly, learning more about your computer using something like a window manager is kind of like a hobby in that discovering new things can be kind of fun. And of course, this whole idea that you're wasting your time by setting up all of this basic functionality is completely untrue because you're learning more about Linux systems and about computing in general, and you're just getting a better feel of how your system works, how everything interacts with each other that you wouldn't really get just by clicking on a few options in a desktop environment, say in a settings panel. Clicking all these different options doesn't really give you an idea of how your computer works behind the scenes as something that setting up your own desktop environment will really help you learn. And I don't really buy the fact that all these people who say that it's a waste of time, I don't really believe that these people are so unbelievably busy that 
they're losing money because they could be working when they have to set up their desktop environment instead. Because let's be honest, if you're watching this video, you probably waste tons of time playing video games, watching YouTube videos, browsing social media. You probably have a bunch of free time that you have already that you kind of waste away on different activities. Not that it's necessarily a bad thing to play video games or anything like that, but I'm just saying you can use all this free time that you have and put it towards something like this, like learning how to get better at your computer. And if you're somebody like me who works full time on a computer, I do full time freelancing and so I spend most of my time on a computer, then learning how to be more efficient and productive on your computer sounds like a pretty good idea to me. And even if learning how to set up a window manager in Linux was a complete waste of time, it had no transferable skills outside of it, then I think it would still be better than just doing something like watching YouTube all day because it's kind of a constructive hobby. Like you work on something and then at the end of the day, you're proud of what you've created. I don't think anybody would really look at somebody doing another hobby, like maybe woodworking and making some small figurines out of wood. I don't think anybody would look at a hobby like that and say that's a waste of time to do something like that because they're enjoying themselves and they're doing something constructive with their time. So taking up a hobby like that only with computers or Linux is not going to be a waste of your time. It's a hobby and learning more about hobbies is never really a waste of time. And let's not kid ourselves, using a window manager is honestly not that complicated. You don't need a PhD in computer science to be able to use a window manager. Sure, the initial setup might take a little while, setting up Bluetooth and a few other things. But actually using the window manager day to day is not hard at all. I've heard people complain that you have to learn all these arcane keyboard shortcuts in order to do anything. All these different keyboard shortcuts just in order to resize your windows and do basic things like moving your windows back and forth. Honestly, it's not that complicated. On a day to day basis, I don't really have more than two or three windows per workspace or desktop on my window manager. And so pretty much all the keyboard shortcuts that I use on a day to day basis are just switching between different workspaces and maybe switching one window from one side of the screen to the other. It's really nothing complicated. You hold down super shift left and right. That's about as complicated as it gets inside a window manager for most of your use cases. 99.9% .9 of the time is what I would say. And I've also heard people complain that if you want to use a window manager, you have to learn how to use all these terminal applications because GUI applications just don't look good inside a window manager. Honestly, they look fine if you really want to use GUI programs like a file manager clicking around. It's honestly not that bad. But like I said, if this becomes more of a hobby for you and you're interested in learning more about your computer, then you can start trying to use some terminal applications like maybe a terminal file manager or a terminal email client just to play around with and also because it actually can make you more productive if you learn about it. Like I said, it's just an investment. So if you want to spend the time in learning how to get good at some of these programs, then it's just going to pay off dividends later on when you get good at it and you're able to do things a lot faster than you would with these graphical interfaces and just clicking around and trying to find things on a graphical file manager now is it just feels so slow to me compared to using a terminal file manager where there's tons of keyboard shortcuts you can customize everything and it just feels so much more efficient just to type a few commands and you're exactly where you want rather than click click clicking around and trying to find things as best as you can with your mouse maybe I'll make a whole other video why I like terminal applications but that's a whole different story obviously you don't have to use terminal applications if you want to use a window manager but finally, let's talk about are you actually more productive using a tiling window manager versus a stacking window manager? And I would say that it's a little bit hard to quantify. It's one of those things that you see a few improvements, but you don't really notice how big of a difference it is between these two things until you get good at a tiling window manager and you've had experience with it and you've been using it for maybe a year or so. And then you try to go back and use a stacking window manager. So this is what I did. I just wanted to see if tiling window managers were really worth it. So I tried to switch back to using something like GNOME and just right away I could notice the difference on how slow everything felt to use and it felt like everything was coded in molasses and everything was just way more difficult to do than something like a tiling window manager because I was constantly having to rearrange my windows with the mouse. I was constantly having to look for my windows. Maybe some of them were buried under other ones. Maybe it's buried under another window on a different workspace, so I had to go look for it. 
If you want to find some window, you have to alt tab, 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 tab millions of times in order to find the windows you're looking for. Whereas on a tiling window manager, you can actually set all of your different applications to different desktops. For example, you can always have your browser open in your first workspace, your Spotify open in your fifth workspace, and so on and so forth. So once you get into a routine, then you basically always know where your windows are at all times. And it's just basically muscle memory in order to find your windows. Just the concept of workspaces and window management, it just works so much better on tiling window managers than a traditional stacking window manager that I don't really see how I could ever go back. And while people may be right in that maybe with some of these things you're only saving milliseconds at a time, like how long does it honestly take to find a window? But if you're doing this hundreds and thousands of times a day like I am because I have a full-time job working with computers, then you can start to see how the results can manifest themselves. If we're talking about milliseconds times thousands of times times hundreds of days throughout your entire life, then you're really going to see the rewards in learning how to use your computer more efficiently. So that's why I think that tiling window managers are absolutely worth the trouble that they are to set up. Now, if you're the kind of person who watched this video and you think, wow, that sounds horrible. I don't want to go through and configure all these different parts of my system. I would much rather just have everything done for me and going through a bunch of config files just to make some small changes across my computer sounds horrible. Then there's good news. You don't have to do it. So tiling window managers are for a very specific kind of person. That's why most people don't use it. That's the kind of person who really likes to tinker with their computer, get the most optimized, efficient workflow that they possibly can, who honestly finds working with computers just fun and configuring things to your liking just brings some kind of satisfaction to you. And it's not really designed for anybody else. So you do have to be a specific kind of person to be able to use tiling window managers, in my opinion. But if all of that sounds like something that would appeal to you, then I would really recommend giving tiling window managers a try, just because I think it'll make a huge difference in your workflow and your productivity.